family of Christ. So this is going to be the third video in our series of God is love and God is wrath. So if you have not seen the first two videos, please go watch both of those first and then watch the first. Well, before watching those first two of the series, please watch the one that I set the precedence for. Um, before that, which is touching on reading the Bible in full before trying to teach the Bible. That one is really going to be important before even starting the series because that one gives a full blown kind of like stage of why God is who he is, why he says what he says and things of that nature. And the importance of not following someone who picks bits and pieces of the Bible to teach without actually learning it in full first, right? There's a lot of te there's a lot of teachers, there's a lot of pastors and evangelists and things of that nature who are setting themselves out to be preachers and evangelists and prophets, and they were never called by God. God is never going to put someone out here without giving that person first his spirit and then getting that letting that person be or I'm sorry, leading that person as they study to show themselves approved unto God by reading the scriptures. It's going to take his spirit to understand the scriptures in full. The deeper revelations of the scriptures is going to come by the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher. He is our guide. But he'll never allow or he'll never set someone out to preach a book of the Bible without that person first learning the book of the Bible in full. That would make God an author of confusion. That would set up the teacher to be in error. And that's just not how that's just not how our God operates. Understand that. So this particular video, we're just going to continue to point out scripture where God is condemning sin and sinful mindsets. And he is condemning teachers of the law. Right. So. What is the law? The law is God's commandments. So when God says, if you love me, keep my commandments, he's basically saying, if you love me, keep the law. In other words, the commandments and the law is the same thing. Now, we, when someone says we are not under the law, we are under grace. That is true. But we have to define what being under the law actually means. So to be under the law means we are bonded to keeping the fullness of the law or we are going to be condemned for not keeping it to be under grace means that if you don't keep the full law you can still be forgiven through the blood or the through the atonement of the sacrifice of jesus christ that is the only difference from not being under the law and now being under grace it does not take away the law the lord says until earth and heaven pass away the law will remain so that means the law is still here. So that means we should still be trying to understand the law and we should still be trying to come as close to being a part of that law as possible. We are not perfect as a human being. We're not perfect as a fleshly nature. So God understands that we won't be able to keep the law in full. So he gives his son as the ultimate sacrifice to take the burden of the condemnation of the law right so what does that mean Jerron? so in the old days if a person did something that was contrary to the law they had to go and sacrifice an animal which was the blood from the animal that was the atonement for the sin right because there's life in blood so instead of you dying and your blood being shed for your sin you go and shed the life of other blood right or you go and shed other blood which is life and that blood or that life that you shed, God would accept it as the atonement of your sin so that you don't have to die. The, basically, the animal is dying in place of you. All right. That is that was what the law was. And that was the atonement for your sin at the time. Right. But there was also different types of obligations that you would be held to if you broke one of the laws. There was a lot of laws. The Ten Commandments is the precedence of the law, but there was there was deeper laws inside of the law. 
which you can read in the book of Exodus and in the book of Deuteronomy, basically all of the Old Testament books, right? The first five books of Moses, you can go read about the laws in those books. And I promise if you go read, I'm telling you to read, you will get a deeper understanding of this stuff. You need to read it. OK, you need to read it and you need to pray to God that he gives you the understanding while you're reading it. Right. So what it means to not be under the law anymore, it just means that now you're not sacrificing animals. You are repenting and asking for forgiveness through the atonement of the blood from the blood of Jesus Christ. You were sacrificing animals because the blood from the animals was the atonement for your sin. Because you're not shedding blood yourself, but you're supposed to because the wages of sin is death, right? So you're technically supposed to die when you sin. Your blood is supposed to be shed when you sin. That is the original precedence of God, right? That's the origin, original um, law of God, the original law of God. Is the wages of sin is death. If you commit a sin, if you commit these different things that's outside of the will of God, you are going to die. You are going to die. Right. So when when Adam disobeyed God, he death was the sentence. Right. So instead of us actually dying and being sentenced to eternal damnation, eternal death, we have a way out of that, which is the blood from Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Please understand this. And if you don't understand this, ask some questions, family of Christ. Ask them questions, put them in the comment section and I will clarify and I will clarify through scripture because I'm not the one presenting this stuff. It is the Holy Spirit. Understand that. OK, so no, we are not under the law. OK, through grace, through God's grace. Right. Because he was so kind enough to say, you know what? They can't keep my laws. So I am going to sacrifice myself right through my son. My only begotten son, I'm going to send him into the world to sacrifice for the, their sins, for the atonement of their sins. And now if the only way to get to heaven is through him. OK, so. What is very important to understand here, none of us are worthy for heaven. The only one that is worthy for heaven is Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the law in the sense of he was the only one able to keep every commandment of Christ throughout his whole entire life that he walked this earth. The 33 years that he lived, he never sinned. He never went against the will of God. So he's the only atonement for sin. He is the perfect sacrifice. Understand? So. When someone is telling you, since we're not under the law and we're under grace, we don't have to even think about the law. We don't have to even um Ponder on it, learn about it, none of that. They are pe they are preaching doctrine of devils. They are preaching false doctrine. Jesus himself said, and I'm going to pull the scripture up. Give me one second, because I didn't actually put that scripture in this. Holy Spirit wants you to know it, though. So I'm going to pull it up. One second. All right. So in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version of the Bible because I want you to get a full broken down understanding of what I'm presenting to you guys here. You can compare this to the King James Version of the Bible. You can go back to the original Hebrew. It's all the same. All right. So check it out. Do not think that I came to do away with or undo the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right. For I assure you and most solemnly solemnly say to you until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass from the law until all things which foreshadows are accomplished. So whoever breaks one of the least important of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least important in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them. He will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So. Based on this scripture alone. Give me one second. So as we see here in scripture, the law in of itself has not been destroyed and has not been done away with. It will not be destroyed or done away with until heaven and earth pass away. 
So, in other words, until this world is done and over with and God comes and creates his new heaven and new earth, this law will remain. We are just not under it because Jesus Christ himself has given us an atonement for our sins. That is the difference. But don't you ever allow somebody to tell you that the law is done away with because it's not. OK, that's false doctrine. That's doctrines of demons. And that is going to lead you into a very, very bad place with the most high. So. Very long intro. But this precedence needed to be set. With that being said, I am going to hop into the scripture and into the context that we have for this particular word. And this is part three of the series. OK, so before I give you this, I'm going to say a quick prayer because we have to make sure that the Lord is the one that is the presenter here and not me. Right. So. Give me one second. Let me just make sure I have. What I need. Perfect. All right. So quick prayer and I'm going to give you guys a scripture in the context that the Holy Spirit sent me out to give. All right. So. Father God, I thank you so much for wisdom. I thank you so much, Father God, for using me as your vessel to present your truths to your people so that they may understand what it is inside of your scriptures, that they are holy and set apart for a chosen people to come into the fullness thereof of your goodness. So, Father God, I pray that the blindfolds are taken off of the eyes of the people that Satan has blindfolded from your truths. Once they hear the realness of the Holy Spirit filled messages on this channel. And I pray that I am used as your vessel until the day I am called home. Father God, I pray against any scheme of the enemy to stifle the receptiveness of this message. Anyone that you are intending to speak to today, Father God, I pray that they receive in full and know that this is coming from the Holy Spirit and not from any man. And I pray against any fiery dart that's being sent inevitably at this channel to prevent it from reaching the people we're supposed to reach. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. So the previous messages that I get, had given you guys that's in the video are video number one and video number two. We see that the love doctrine is actually a false doctrine. Jesus being love. God being love, that is true. Gentleness, these different things, right? So long suffering, all these different things, the fruits of the Holy, the Holy Spirit, that is true. But it is directed towards God's people, God's chosen people, and then God's people who are blindfolded, who God is trying to save, the sinners, right? But there is a synagogue of Satan. There is a remnant of Satan who God is not speaking to. When it comes to praying for your enemies, when it comes to the love doctrine, God is not talking to those people. And we need to understand that there is nowhere in scripture where God is telling you to pray for Satan and his fallen angels. You're not going to find it. And if you do find it, put it in the a comment section so we can all learn with you, because I failed to see that in scripture myself. And I'm very well studied and I'm studying daily the scriptures. It doesn't exist because that's not God. That's not who he is. He was destroying full blown cities that was filled with evil people because those are not his people. He said to his Israelite, his 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 chosen priesthood to not worship him, how the synagogue of Satan worships Satan and worships other gods. Right. So when he says other gods, he's literally talking about people that are are gods that are under Satan. Understand this by the power of the Holy Ghost. He's not talking about everybody when it comes to the love doctrine. OK, so if you're just speaking a love doctrine and you're saying it's for everybody, it's for everything, it's for every piece of everything. That is false doctrine. OK, and I'm being sent out here to correct you on that. That is not real doctrine. That is false doctrine. It's not coming from the Lord. It's coming from the synagogue of Satan. OK, so with that being said. We're going to jump into scripture. I'm going to prove these points to be true. So. Matthew chapter 23 verses 23 through 26. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Woe to you, 
teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides. You strain out a gnat, but, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. This is Jesus of the New Testament, right? So under our new covenant that or the new covenant that he is literally building in the New Testament. This is Jesus, right? And he is judging the religious folks who tithe, but neglect the more important matters of the law. Justice, mercy and faithfulness. So we know that Jesus Christ in the under the new covenant or when he walked the earth, he was preaching justice, mercy and faithfulness, right? For his people to live by. We need to live by these attributes, right? Because they're, they're attributes of the Lord. But he's preaching to the Pharisees that they should have practiced that also without neglecting the law, because we know that tithing is under the law, right? That is a law to tithe. That's under the law. Understand that. So, and he also refers to them as blind guides. So a guide is somebody that's leading somebody somewhere. He's saying that they're actually blindly leading people because they are teaching to tithe, but they're not holding near and dear to the faithfulness, the justice and the mercy aspect. Right. So they're not doing both. But it's a requirement that you do both. So. Hey, family. So as I was recording this video, the Lord highlighted something to me to clarify a little bit more. So there's no confusion here when it comes to the law still being something that we should be teaching and something that we should not teach against or, you know, in other words, saying that the law has been done away with versus not being under it. So, for an example, the tithing aspect, tithing in of itself is still something that we are required to do. But in the Old Testament, the law was 10 percent. The first goat of the or the best goat that's going to come out first type thing. And I'm paraphrasing, but it was basically that was the tithe under the new covenant. The tithe is for you to give as your heart says to give. Right. So you're still required to tithe, but it is not exactly how the law was in the Old Testament. So it, it, it remains true what is being taught here. We're not under the law, but the law is still active and it remains true. It is just tweaked under the new covenant. So everyone who keeps condemning those who teach the laws, even though we are not under them, are saying things and, and are saying crazy things like new covenant is just grace. Tell me why. Does the New Testament Jesus speak to religious folks this way? He's speaking the law and he's speaking the new covenant grace all at the same time. So it goes back to the scripture I just read to you guys where it says he's not doing away with the law or not destroying the law, but fulfilling the law. He's saying that the new covenant grace is not getting it's not doing away with the law. It's literally just. There's a different way out or a different atonement for your sin. There's a different kind of there's, there's this, this new grace that he's bringing. But the law is still there and we still need to live by the law as well. Right. And we just read that in scripture. So don't get in the comments and don't say nothing crazy like, no, he never said that when we just read it in scripture. We just read. I'm going to reread it just so we can uh, solidify this. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spice, mint, dill and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law. Justice, mercy and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. He is saying you're supposed to do all of it. The reason why he was calling them blind guys is because they were doing half and not doing the rest. They were preaching the law of Moses, but they were not showing grace. They were not showing mercy. They were not being faithful and things of that nature. But they were preaching the law. Jesus is saying that you're supposed to do both. Understand that there's preachers nowadays which say. 
You're only supposed to do the grace part. You're not supposed to do the law part. Both of them are blind guides. It's just one of them preaching a different go uh, doctrine than the other. We got one preaching full grace, and then we have one preaching full law. They are both blind guides because God is now in the new under the new covenant. He's grace and law. He's grace and law, except for the law is not stuff that we fall under because we couldn't keep it. So now our atonement, instead of it being us having to sacrifice animals, it is the sacrifice of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. Please catch that in your spirit. And if you don't understand, ask some questions and we'll clarify for you. And when I say we, I'm talking about me and the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit and me because I come secondary to him. But I carry the Holy Spirit inside of my vessel so I can clarify these things by the power of the Holy Ghost. OK, so let's continue. So. Blind leaders leading the blind and everyone falling in the ditch in a ditch. That is scripture. And that is both talking about the blind leaders that preach just law and the blind leaders that preach just grace. Because God is not just law and he is not just grace. He is a mixture of both. He is grace. And we see that because he sent his only begotten son to die for a sinful generation or sinful generations. Right. And he was sinless himself. And he sacrificed himself by the leading of the father for us. That is the ultimate grace. That is the ultimate love. So we know that God is love. We know that God is grace. But we also know that if you do not believe on Jesus Christ as the only atonement for sin and as the only way to heaven, then you are not going to go to heaven. And if you if you practice sin, you will not go to heaven. We also know that. And we know that by scripture. I'm going to read that to you as well. I didn't have that in here, but it, look, the Holy Spirit does what he wants to do. So I'm going to read that to you as well. Give me one second. All right. So first Corinthians. Chapter six, verses nine through eleven, it reads, do you know, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate by perversion, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, whose words are used as weapons to abuse, insult, humiliate, intimidate, or slander, nor swindlers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. And such were some of you before you believed. Before you believed, right? But you were washed by the atoning sacrifice of Christ. Yeah, I got loud with that because I'm. this is solidifying everything I'm preaching here. You were sanctified. Set apart for God and made holy. Right. You were justified, declared free of guilt in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit of our God, the source of the believers new life and changed behavior. That was the amplified version of the Bible compared to the KJV or compared to any other Bible you want to. It's going to say the same thing. None of these people that fit these attributes will make it into the kingdom of heaven, no matter how much you say out of your mouth that you believe that Christ is Lord. I need you to understand this. So if you just preach the grace doctrine, you're setting people up to fail. You're a blind leader leading the blind because you're going to have people out here thinking they can do the stuff that I just read that you can't do. And, they're, and you're going to have them thinking that all they have to do is say sorry to Jesus because he's full of grace. and He's going to let you into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible is clear that that is not something Jesus is going to do. OK, it's not going to happen. So when I preach to you guys and I come against sin. I'm not judging you. I'm preaching by the Holy Spirit and we're preaching by the scriptures. And whoever is not preaching this way is preaching false doctrine. Understand this by the. Whew, I'm sorry, y'all. I get real animated sometimes because the Holy Spirit is, is, is serious right now in this hour. Y'all need to understand this. Hear me by the living God. A full blown love doctrine, a full blown grace doctrine is false doctrine, a full blown law doctrine, a full blown. You have to keep all the commandments and keep them precisely or you're going to be condemned. That is false doctrine. The new covenant is both grace and both law. 
We just read all of that in scripture. So do not get in the comments playing with me. We just read it all in scripture. OK, so if you don't believe you just been taught wrong and that's OK. I mean, it's not OK that you've been taught wrong, but it's OK that you have some questions. Ask the questions and then pray to the Holy Ghost that he reveals to you the truth as you're asking the questions, because he's raising up his remnant right now. I am part of his remnant that he is raising up and he's get, he's, he's sending us out here to teach you guys the truth because his church has been led astray. By false doctrine, by doctrines of devils, by people who get out and teach the Bible without actually learning it for themselves first. And this is why I also want you guys, whoever's watching this video, if you haven't watched the first couple of videos that I made, and if you haven't watched that video that I made that sets the precedence, right? Precedence for the rest of this series, please go watch all of that first so this can all be a full circle moment for you. So with that being said, I'm going to hop back into the scripture, into the context of I, want to, I don't want to um, drag this video out too much, uh, too much. So I want you guys to catch this in spirit. So. When Jesus said you clean the outside of the cup, meaning you appear to be righteous on the outside, but on the inside, you are ravenous wolves who don't really know God. That is what the Lord was saying in the scriptures that I had read to you guys in um, the beginning of this video. And this is the New Testament. This is the New Testament. And it's speaking the same way as the Old Testament. People oftentimes want to compare the Old Testament God and Jesus to separate entities. They want to make it seem like the Old Testament God, which is the Father Yahweh, Jesus alike, because they are the same, right? <sighs> Let me clarify. They're not the same in the sense of they are the same person, but they are one. Right. So the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, they are one. Right. So they are the same. They try to make it seem like Jesus is more of a nice nature when it comes to sin than God was in the Old Testament. But that is absolutely false doctrine. Jesus is condemning sin just like Yahweh was in the Old Testament when he condemned sin. The only difference is Jesus is now the atonement for our sins. So we don't fall under the law in the sense of we are held to the high um, condemnation of the law. We are now under the grace of Jesus Christ, which is his blood as our atonement for sin. Please understand this. And if you can't pray for understanding, please don't just start saying stuff because you're going to make yourself look crazy when scripture proves you to be false when you speak. OK. So, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they're all scripture, and all of it is supposed to be preached. Anybody that is telling you different, you just need to tell them, stop the cap. Stop lying. We are supposed to preach all of, all of the, the scriptures, okay? This is all for us to learn and grow with the Lord. All of it. Old Testament and New Testament. Jesus himself preached Old Testament and New Testament. There wouldn't even be a New Testament if it wasn't the Old Testament. The New Testament came after Jesus walked the earth and, and, and died and ascended. That's how we got the New Testament. Everything he preached came from the Old Testament. You got to tell people to make the stuff make sense that when they preach, man, like it's they are preaching false doctrine. OK, don't believe anything that people say. You learn the scriptures and you believe what people say based on the scriptures, not based on what they say. OK, <laughs> I'm sorry to be so, so direct here, but this is what the Holy Spirit needs y'all to understand. So first clean your inner man and the outside man will clean itself. Read your Bible and stop allowing these hypocrites to preach to you with sly tongues, but no Holy Spirit. And that is a mic drop moment. That's the end of this particular video. Catch this in spirit, please. If you clean the inner man which is your spirit, right? So if you go to God, you submit to God. And by submitting to God, that means you're going to submit to his will. So that means anything that I just read to you guys, that was a sin that said it would not come into the kingdom. That means if you are currently doing any of that stuff, you're going to allow the Lord to prune you of all of that stuff that you're doing. If you're watching pornography, if you're masturbating, if you're uh, cursing and if you're gossiping and slandering people, 
if you are murdering, committing adultery, committing fornications, if you're doing any of this stuff, you're going to come to Jesus Christ as the atonement for all of those sins that you're doing. And you're going to allow him to clean you up from the inside and it's going to reflect on the outside. That is what the Lord is preaching in these scriptures. Once that happens, you are going to continuously seek him every single day by staying out of sin, reading his word and praying that the Holy Ghost leads you into all truth. Because it's going to take the Holy Ghost to open you up to scripture so you can understand it clearly. And then you're going to live it out. And then you're going to teach it to others. OK, that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. And then you're going to go to heaven and you're going to live happily ever after in the presence of the Lord. You know, such a beautiful thing that's going to happen. Or you're going to stay in sin and you're going to stay bonded to the devil. Right. Because all of those sinful acts, they come in the name or in the spirit of Satan. Satan inspired it. He is the reason why you do it. And if you stay in that lifestyle, then you're going to spend your eternity placement after you die, after your flesh body dies and your spirit ascends out of this body and it goes where it's going to go. It's going to spend eternity with Satan in hell. You don't want that because that is eternal torment. OK, so I pray that whoever watched this, watched it in full. And I pray that you caught that in spirit. And I pray this all in Jesus mighty name. Amen.